Hello, what a beautiful day. Welcome to today's session. God has been faithful. His mercy is endures forever. I believe you have been well, staying safe in spite of the situation. Today, we shall continue with our community diagnosis. Last session on that. And for today's session, it is data analysis. So the data you obtain from the field is known as raw data. And this raw data cannot give you much information. You cannot interpret how many males, how many females, unless you do data analysis. So what is data analysis? Data analysis is the separation and categorization of numerical data into groups in order to understand its meaning. When you have them in the questionnaires, you cannot know what they mean. So analysis helps us to understand the meaning. So statistical methods are used to summarize the data and also to make inference about the data. So that means that what has been gathered on a sample can be used to indicate the probab probable happening or characteristic of the entire population so as to make a judgment about them. So the process of data analysis involves the following steps. We have data cleaning, sorting or tallying, coding and entering data, and then analysis of results. Data cleaning involves the following. You need to find missing data. Maybe someone did not respond to a certain question. That's missing data. And you need to find out whether it was a mistake or you need to correct it. You also I talked about correcting mistakes committed by the interviewers. If they did a mistake, maybe there's, there's contradiction of what they have indicated, you correct it with them. And then maybe sometimes we need to exclude inconsistent information. This information from the raw data is not cannot be verified for correctness, so you can decide to remove it. And then we will go to sorting and tallying. You organize your data in a systematic manner, which, which will facilitate uh, analysis. So sorting is arranging raw data in groups or in particular order. You want to look at demographic data, so sort it in that order, age, marital status, gender, and all that. Data which has been sorted or arranged into some order according to magnitude is called an array. Now, tallying. Tallying is setting up of classes or clusters which are tied by a slanting stroke. So you get maybe this number of questionnaires, we have 15-year-olds. So you say the first questionnaire, 15-year-old, you tally. Another 15-year-old, you tally. So when they reach four, you cross with a slanting stroke. So those that have been crossed means five, to the first five. So each cluster represents specific, yeah, specific identifiable characteristics of the specific data. This data is then presented using a frequency distribution table, frequency. How many are 18, 10 to 18 years? Frequency, how many of them appear in that? And then you go to data coding and entering. This involves the conversion of data into numerical codes, which represents attributes or measurements of the variables. The coding should start with the preparation of a code book. When you talk about demographic factors, which code are you giving them? And within the demographic factors, age, it has which code and all that. So you should include as much information as you can during coding. The computers have simplified this process. Not like our time, we used to sit down with books. But now we have Microsoft Excel. It makes it even easier. We not look into other statistical uh, methods, but Microsoft Excel is the most basic you can use. So they save time and increase the quality of the data. So we have two types of data analysis, or two types of analysis for the data. We have qualitative and quantitative. Qualitative, quality, qualitative analysis is usually applied on data which can be counted but cannot be measured. Qualitative analysis, as I said, mentioned, it is used to, it is applied to analyze data that cannot be measured, like color. You cannot measure pink, it is 10%, no. It allows us to, to analyze information which has in-depth characteristics so that you can reach useful conclusions and recommendations. When you talk about quanti, quantity, quantitative analysis, on the other hand, is usually applied to data that can be given on a numerical basis or can be measured, for example, age in years, weight in kilograms, number of females, and that. So we have analyzed our data. 
we have the information. This number are females. This number are males. Age between this and that. Marital status. These are singles. These are married, widowed, like that. So we need to present our data. How do we present our data? There are different ways of data presentation. You can use a frequency distribution table with a tally sheet. Tabular presentation. Just have a table with the variables. Age between 15 to 25. 21 to this, 10. And then you have graphical presentation using graphs. So under graphical presentations, there are various types. We have histograms, frequency polygon, bar graphs, pie charts, and maps. And graphs are very familiar method of presenting information. And they're usually attractive even to the readers or to, the, to your audience. So you can use the, the best graphical presentation to communicate your findings from data. Now, as we continue, these graphical presentations should be clear, concise, and unambiguous. They should have unambiguous titles. Very clear. Their titles should be say, if you're talking about age, the title should talk about age. They, they should be clear and concise statement of units, correct vertical and horizontal scaling, statement of units used on vertical and horizontal axis, you need to have a key or legend to explain the various features of a graph and then correct graphing according to the scales specified on the axis. And then you have maps. Maps are another effective way of presenting information. They are used to describe, for example, differences in the frequency of a disease in different areas. So you can have a map of Kenya. You will see this part is showing red. Maybe that part has more of malaria. This part is showing yellow. That is use of maps to, to report the findings. Now you have, you have presented your data. It can now be understood. Then you have to write a report. Community diagnosis is not yet complete without a report. The report should have the following sections. Title page, which will be the front page, followed by acknowledgement, abbreviations, table of contents, you should have your executive summary. Some people call it abstract. A summary of the whole report. Then you go to introduction, background information, methodology, the main body. Now we discuss your findings. The conclusion, what are you concluding from those findings? What are you recommend, recommending to the community? And then references and the appendix. Appendix will include the questionnaires, the budget, or the map of the area, or anything else that you used which is not within the process of community diagnosis. Now you have our report ready, printed, you must go back to the community and give them feedback. You cannot correct data from a community and then you just go and disappear. You write your report, get back to them, give them a date when they can, they can come back to receive their feedback, their situation. So communication of the study findings can be done through various fora. This include chiefs barazas, church meetings, school gatherings, or during seminars and workshops. So you work with the, with the, with the gatekeepers, the chief, those who are involved with you to, to gather the people together on a specific day and give them your report. They have listened to your report. You remember we talked about recommendations in our report. So you recommend particular areas. You commend them for where they did well, and then you recommend areas for improvement. So when it comes to areas of improvement, you need to have an action plan. So after communicating the areas of need, participatory planning is carried out in order to address the problems. Remember I said participatory planning. They need to participate, not you giving them way forward. Let them look for the solutions themselves. So an action plan is then formulated with clear goals and time frame. So the implementation of the action plan is carried out with regular monitoring and evaluation so as to identify the progress made and what to do in case of obstacles. An action plan has the activity. It has to be done by who, by when, resources needed, and evaluation column. For us in the community, you work with the chiefs because they are the gatekeepers of the, of the sub-location and the sub-chiefs, assistant chiefs. So you work with them to help you in the monitoring and evaluation. If there was an issue of lack of toilets, then you need to have that in the action plan. Who will oversee that? What is needed to do that? So that the community members can take it upon themselves to make sure that every household has a toilet. Thank you very much. I wish you all the best. We have come to the end of our community diagnosis session. We shall, have, we shall look into other areas, other topics within community health.
Continue staying safe. Bye.